Bill. We, we wish you many more healthy and happy ones. Uh, we're here by the Route 3 bridge to celebrate the, the first major infusion of federal bridge funding made possible by the historic infrastructure bill President Biden signed into law last November. Senator Booker and I, along with Congressman Pasquale and our House delegation, fought hard for the Infrastructure Investments and Jobs Act because we knew what it would mean for New Jersey smoother roads and safer bridges, modernized railways and more mass transit, cleaner drinking water and new electric vehicle infrastructure, good paying jobs and a more competitive economy. And I know Governor Murphy, thank you Governor for joining us today, and Commissioner Gutierrez Cacchetti of the Department of Transportation are ready to put these historic investments to work. I also want to recognize a, a dear friend, uh, a, a labor leader of international import, uh, Ray Pacino with the Laborers International right. Union of North America for joining us. This infrastructure deal is a big win for New Jersey workers, so, yeah. and, so we're glad to have you here. Uh, also uh, glad to have uh, Commissioner Marenko of North Bergen and Commissioner Cirillo of West New York uh, to be with us uh, as well. Um, our previous president talked a lot about infrastructure, but he never delivered. As I've said in the past, President Trump cared more about building walls than sturdier bridges. It took a Democratic president and a Democratic House and Senate to get the job done. And now New Jersey workers are going to get the job done, repairing, replacing, and improving bridges across our state. Over the next five years, more than $1.1 billion will help repair and replace dilapidated bridges throughout New Jersey, starting with this initial infusion of $229 million for 2022. That's on top of $6.8 billion in highway funding and over $4.1 billion in guaranteed transit funding headed our way. And we're also working to secure billions of dollars in competitive funds to complete Gateway and build new Trans-Hudson tunnels. Gateway, which got new, higher ratings, and we always said if we were honestly rated, we would get higher ratings uh, by the Federal Transit Administration, just got those higher ratings, which opened the door uh, to making sure that what many of you asked us at many press conferences is Gateway dead? And we said, not by a long shot. It's alive and it is moving forward. And there's another $12.5 billion we can compete through to the competitive bridge investment program. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is the largest investment in America's infrastructure since the creation of the federal highway system. That was 1950. Six, 66 years ago. So this is beyond a generational investment. And boy, do we need it. Throughout New Jersey, we have 500 bridges in a state of disrepair, including the Route 3 bridge behind us today. New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the nation, so it's no surprise our bridges get a lot of wear and tear. But this is truly a nationwide problem. Americans travel across more than 45,000 dilapidated bridges throughout the United States more than 171 million times each and every day. Rundown bridges are a hazard to public safety. And I'm not just talking about the threat of collapse. I'm talking about the traffic delays and the deadly car accidents, road congestion and harmful pollution, not to mention the longer commutes that force hardworking people to miss out hours of quality time with their families. Decrepit bridges also drive up costs for businesses and consumers, especially during a global pandemic that continues to disrupt our supply chains. Investing in infrastructure that moves goods and people more efficiently to our economy will have a stabilizing impact on the rising prices so many folks are concerned about right now. I know that Commissioner Gutierrez Cacchetti and the entire NJDOT team work hard to keep our bridges throughout New Jersey safe and operational, and they do a great job. But you can only do so much with limited resources. 
Years of chronic underinvestment in our infrastructure have forced transportation agencies across America to stick band-aids over gaping wounds. Meanwhile, the backlog of repairs gets longer and longer every year. Our infrastructure used to be the envy of the world. Yet today, the World Economic Forum doesn't even rank America's transportation infrastructure in the top 10. For far too long, Washington's obsession with trickle-down economics has prioritized tax cuts for the wealthy over infrastructure investments that create opportunity for everyone. With the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, we're finally going to put the Band-Aids away. Instead of temporary fixes, New Jersey will be able to pursue more ambitious projects like this one. The Route 3 eastbound bridge was built in 1934. That's nearly a century ago. And it's fair to say traffic was a lot lighter back then. Today, more than 150,000 vehicles cross the Hackensack River via Route 3 every day. Many of them headed for the New Jersey Turnpike or downtown Manhattan via the Holland Tunnel. The ever-growing demand placed on this bridge have prompted New Jersey DOT to make several repairs and complete emergency work over the years. Now with this $1.1 billion in bridge funding headed to New Jersey, we can focus on building a new modernized eastbound span across the Hackensack River, and I think the governor has some specific announcements about this that is even greater than what we thought in terms of what will be built. As chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I can tell you that a global economy is more competitive and interconnected than ever before. If we want to maintain our competitive edge over China, if we want more companies to invest in America, if we want the 21st century to be another great American century, then we must build the infrastructure our businesses and our workers need to win. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act will unleash American ingenuity and help us build a more resilient, more sustainable, and more productive economy. And we have no intention of stopping here. We must keep fighting for the remainder of President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. Lifting children out of poverty, making childcare more affordable, dealing with tax cuts for working families, addressing the climate change through the creation of new jobs, providing hardworking homeowners with tax relief like the reinstatement of the SALT deduction. These are investments that will grow New Jersey's middle class. They too are a bridge to a more prosperous future for all Americans, and we are going to continue to fight for them as hard as we fought for this historic bipartisan infrastructure deal. Let me just say a brief word in Spanish, because I was told that we have several of our Hispanic press here, and then uh, French, as well. French as well. Je parle français très bien. Oui, uh, okay. Uh, well, you know, what other challenges you want to throw my way? No, okay. Uh, so, uh, simplemente estamos aquí con el gobernador, el senador Booker, el congresista Pascal y, y todos estos distinguidos personas para anunciar una eh, inversión del gobierno federal enorme para nuestros puentes, para nuestra infraestructura, para nuestro sistema de transportación. Eh, más de 1.1 billones de dólares van a ayudar a New Jersey, eh, empezando con este proyecto que está atrás de nosotros en la Ruta 3, con 229 millones de dólares. Eso es además de 6.8 billones de dólares eh, para eh, fondos de transporte de, de nuestras eh, carreteras. Y cuatro billones de dólares para nuestro sistema de tránsito que tanto de nuestra comunidad usa. Uh, y también tenemos una nueva meta que estamos logrando por una nueva nota que se dio para construir los nuevos túneles adentro de Nueva York y New Jersey. Todo eso es una inversión en nuestro futuro, una inversión que nuestros trabajadores van a tener enormes cantidades de trabajo a hacer y vamos a tener una mejor calidad de vida Vamos a respirar mejor aire y vamos a pasarnos menos tiempo en tráfico y más tiempo con nuestras familias y siendo productivos en nuestros negocios. Y por eso hoy es tan importante. Esta inversión no se ha hecho desde el año 1956, que es cuando actualmente creamos el sistema de transporte nacional. With that, uh, let me um, welcome uh, my colleague, uh, 
uh, a tremendous uh, fighter. Uh, I couldn't have a better colleague in the United States Senate who understands these investments, but also understands the investments I referenced to at the end of my comments that are so important as leading the way on that Senator Cory Booker.